Hello, today we're going to talk about bonds, valuation of bonds specifically. The reason why you need to understand how bonds are priced is because you more than likely have some of these in your portfolio, whether if they're in mutual funds or individual bonds. The, um, the concept of bond pricing is actually very beautiful mathematically. It, uh, it works. It's pretty, pretty straightforward, simple, but it uh, can get very, very complex. So this is going to be just a basic conversation about how to value bonds. For example, let's take an individual bond. Let's say it's a 30-year bond, corporate bond, pays 3% interest, and it's a you know a $10,000 bond. So the term is 30, the interest is 3, and it pays coupons twice annually. Okay, so the coupons are semi-annual coupons. So if you buy it initially, it's at par, so it's a thousand dollars, right? Interest rates three percent. So in twenty years, you'll return your principal. You'll receive your principal back from the company of of a thousand dollars, right? Twenty years plus the coupon payments every year. All right. If you keep it to maturity, that's what happens. However, if you sell the bond early, so let's say after a year, well, what's the price going to be? Well, it depends on a variety of factors. Number one. What are the current interest rates? And number two, what's the credit risk of the company? Okay, so credit interest rates. So if it's if you buy it at three percent and interest rates double to six percent, I'm not going to go buy your bond for three percent. I'll go buy a new bond and get six percent there. So therefore, your price is going to decline, right? And from a a credit reporting perspective, there's a variety of credit agencies that review all the bonds and all the corporate bonds and they rank them from investment grade all the way to junk bonds. And there's various different levels in between. And if the bond increases or decreases in this, um, and a lot of times these these rating agencies are, uh, you know, they're not so forward looking as to what's going to happen. You know, nobody has a, a crystal ball really, but it's, you know, where they're at now. And, uh, you know, have they set up the fund sink fund and is it, is it going to pay out? And what's the risk of them defaulting? Most bonds mature fine, they don't default. But nevertheless, there is that default risk. So when we look at bonds, let's, let's talk about the interest rates, for example. Let me just use a pencil as an example. So. And on one side, we'll have the price of the bonds, and then the other side will have the, the interest rates. And then the pencil represents the maturity, the average maturity of the bond. So the longer your maturity is, the more at risk you are for interest rate swings. If if your bond matures in you know a week and interest rates go up, it's not going to affect impact the value that much. But if it's a 20-year bond and interest rates go up, the value of the bond goes down. The further you're out on the duration schedule, the maturity line, the further the price can increase or decrease. But if interest rates decline, the price of the, va the, price of the bond goes up. So it's invert inverse relationship between in uh, interest rates and price of the bonds. And the further you're out on the duration, the maturity line, the greater that swing will be. Okay, so that's an easy way to think about how interest rates impact. So are bonds safe? Well, sure, they're safe, except for their value can change, right? Um, the value can swing with interest rates. And what if the credit forecast for that industry or that firm changes? Well, in that case, the price of the bond will be impacted. It can increase or decrease. So um, we'll, we'll get into math in a future video and, and go through some of the pricing of these. Uh, but from a high level business valuation perspective of, 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 a, of a bond, how this is how we calculate the price is, is determined on interest rates and on um, uh, capital uh, credit risks. So those combine together. So it's important if you own a mutual fund, right? Because that mutual fund will have, <clears throat> it depends. If it's a bond fund, 
what you know is what's the quality of the bonds that are in there and then what what's the average maturity of those so sometimes there'll be an average maturity of 20 years or maybe 10 years or maybe five years so the shorter the duration the mature of the maturity the less volatility there will be in that mutual fund for that holds bonds now you can buy individual bonds and you can buy bonds in an ETF or in a mutual fund let's just use an example of the mutual fund and you diversify your risk across that means you get an aggregate of you know many bonds and then you take the average of what that maturity is so then if interest rates go up you know then we get that relationship that play so this has been a summary of how bonds are priced based upon their credit worthiness and also an interest rate and it is it's a very simple relationship but it also can explain why your bond funds can increase or decrease in value and why if you buy an individual bond and hold it to maturity you generally get your principal back unless there's a default so <clears throat> Hope this helps understand the pricing of bonds. Thank you for your time. Thanks for watching.